at the end of the questions that I have, I will be opening it up to the audience. You guys will have a chance to ask questions. Um, I want to stop about 8.15, maybe 8.30 or so. So we'll have time for a little bit of a meet and greet where you can speak personally with our candidates here. Oh, okay, so let's get started. What I'm going to ask each candidate first to do is introduce themselves. Tell us a little bit about themselves. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Ballard and Ms. Parker, uh, for moderating. Uh, it's a blessing to be here. I want to thank those of you uh, who are here uh, on this beautiful Saturday afternoon to take time out uh, from many other things you could be doing to listen to this conversation about the future of the city. My name is Shabar Jeffries. I'm running for North. I'm running for mayor of this beautiful city of North. Uh, I'm a North native. I grew up in the South Ward of North. Uh, I, I grew up in a family that didn't have a lot. I didn't come from a famous family. I didn't come from any sort of privilege. We came from struggle. Uh, my mother was a teenage mom when she gave birth to me. She was 19 years old. My father, like unfortunately too many uh, men uh, in our community, uh, didn't uphold his responsibilities and he left. Uh, he abandoned. Uh, can I start off, please? Sure. Um, as, as I was saying, you know, we came from a situation of struggle. My mom was a teenage mom. Uh, my father, unfortunately, uh, when he gave up, when, when I was born, uh, wasn't ready to take care of the, uh, the responsibility of raising a young, young son. Uh, so I spent many of my first several years with a bunch of different relatives. Uh, my mom, unfortunately, was killed. I was raised by my grandma. But the beautiful thing about it is that the people of Newark invested in me every step of the way. And the Boys and Girls Club of Newark, I received love, I received opportunity, I received promise. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Newark provided a scholarship to me in eighth grade to be able to get a college preparatory education. So I went to a college prep high school, see all prep in West Orange with a scholarship, later the Terrell Fund, which provides all kinds of services and supports uh, to North Young people, gave me a scholarship uh, to go to college. Uh, that was an opportunity I would not have had but for the people of Newark. And so I've dedicated my career to give it back to a city that's given me so much. For 14 years now, as a civil rights attorney, I've represented workers for free on a variety of different issues, domestic violence, employment discrimination, housing, education, criminal justice, reentry, voting rights, you name it. All this is work for free, so they can do sense of my character. It's about service. I've also, because I'm deeply committed to youth development, spent time as a board president for the Boys and Girls Club. And we came in at a time of crisis uh, where the club was threatened with, was, was threatened with uh, potentially closing clubs not only did we not close any clubs during our watch, we expanded programs, First Avenue and Belmont Runyon. Uh, because school uh, is so important to me, we created our own school uh, because we wanted parents to have more options. So we created from scratch a public charter school called Team Academy. We just had a vision on a piece of paper 12 years ago. We put it in action 12 years later. It's the largest public charter school uh, in the state of New Jersey. I have deep experience in criminal justice. In fact, I'm the only one running in this race who has experience in law enforcement. I oversaw the state police, county prosecutors, investigators, as counsel to the Attorney General for the State of New Jersey, I was third in the department, in the largest uh, uh, department in the State of New Jersey. Oversaw budgets of over $100 million. Oversaw personnel of over 1,000 individuals. Uh, over helped oversee the crime plan for the state where we reduced crime three years in a row uh, throughout the entire State of New Jersey. And given the kind of issues we have in our city right now, we need that sort of executive experience, that executive background. We have a city right now where the streets are off the hook. Uh, we have crime all over the place, shootings on a regular basis, carjackings on a regular basis. Uh, aggravated assaults, robberies. The city council passed a budget that laid off almost 170 cops. The city council passed a budget that raised your taxes 40%, but then they gave themselves a pay raise in 2011. Uh, the city, city council passed a budget that permits double dipping. Multiple elected officials have two, sometimes three, uh, public jobs where you can barely get one. You pay for your city, you pay for your city council, many other elected officials to drive around in a car uh, that you pay for. We can't afford that, but this is the kind of culture we have. That's not going to change until we get new leadership. If we keep sending the same people back, you don't get the same results you've been getting year after year and decade after decade. We represent something new. We represent something fresh. We represent something with a record of results. And these are the kind of results we need in the city of New York. Thank you. Thank you, Shabar. Um, Thank you. So I just want to say uh, again, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to share uh, today, this afternoon, uh, with a small crowd. So, you know, uh, I just want to applaud everybody who came out uh, to hear the debate. Uh, those who came out the first time who thought it not robbery to come out again. Uh, 
those of you who are still making up your mind, trying to figure out uh, what you want to do in this election, I think it's a very, very important election. So I want to make a couple of concessions before I go forward. The first concession is that all of us that are running have some administrative experience. So let's concede that from the door. All of us in this uh, race have administrative experience. What I want to see, however, is that managing a group of lawyers or being in charge of a bureaucracy at the county somehow gives you more administrative experience than a principal of a school who manages hundreds of employees, millions of dollars, and thousands of kids every single day. I also want to see what happened at the last debate. Uh, one of the candidates said, it's not about ideas. It is completely and absolutely about ideas. This is about ideas. In fact, if this was a real debate, we would be debating our ideas instead of our history and our resume. Our history and our resume are not running for office. What we think and what we believe that we want to put in place becomes important. My father isn't running for mayor. My mother isn't running for mayor. My aunt isn't running for mayor. I'm running for mayor. What I did 20 years ago is important, but what I'm doing today is more important. Those things are serious. So I didn't just show up because there's an election. I've been around for 20 years. And people, I don't have to go over and over and over about who I am because I've been in the community my entire life. I've been here organizing for 21 years. In fact, I taught school for 10 years down the street here at Warren Street and taught many of the people's children in this complex over and over again. I did after school programs right down the street for the kids in this complex. I also won't concede this. I won't concede that Newark is, everybody in Newark City Hall are yeah, criminals, uh, they're trying to get over, they're trying to hurt people of Newark, they're doing the wrong thing. I won't concede that. And I won't concede that because I know that there's some good people down here trying to make a difference with difficult situations that we have to change. As a matter of fact, the council people know that in and of itself, we have to do more as a council, but we need greater power and greater influence. That's why we're running for mayor. That's why Anibal Ramos is trying to run for mayor. That's why I'm trying to run for mayor. And that's why the professor here is running for mayor instead of running for council, because he knows the power to change what's going on in this city rests in the seat of the mayor. But what I'm, I also want you to understand this. We're not moving from the same old top bottom idea. So it's not just about me. It's not just about me, it's about all of us collectively. It's about all of us as a group, as a city. It's about the residents, about the schools, the universities, everybody that's here in this community, parents, children, about all of us coming together. Every transformation in this country has been accomplished by a movement, whether it's the abolitionist movement, the suffrage movement, the women's movement, and today the civil rights movement, right? So what we want to do is continue a movement to transform urban America, a movement that we're asking you to be a part of a movement that we want you to be involved in. Not just me, not just vote for me because I'm the smartest guy in the room. We had that situation and it didn't work. It didn't work for a long time. The smartest guy in the room came and ruled over everybody in the city and didn't get anybody else involved because he was the smartest guy in the room. What we need is somebody that engages us all to do a few things, to believe in ourselves, to depend on ourselves, to be self-reliant and independent, to begin to pool our resources, the seaport, the airport, the universities, the schools, the children, the intellectuals, everything that we have in this city, pool it all together to transform this community piece by piece. And I've been building a movement in this city for 20 years. 20 years, and I'm just asking you to be a part of that movement. So I'm not asking you to just vote for me. I'm not asking you in 2014 in May to go in that uh, booth and push a lever just for Raz Baraka. I'm asking you to go in there and pull a lever for yourself. I'm asking you to pull a lever for your family. Because I say when I become mayor, we become mayor. It is the first time, first time in the history of this city where we begin to say that the people have to go to the polls, not just go to the polls and put themselves in office, not just put an individual in office. Uh, and, and the last thing, so. I want us to be clear on this. So, Sharp James was a phys ed teacher at the university level. He became a councilman. And after the councilman, he became the mayor for 20 years. He has a lasting impact on this city forever, whether you agree with the things he did or not, he did some powerful things in this city. Cory Booker was a housing lawyer in the Central Ward who lived in Brick Towers, 
supposedly. And became the Central Board Councilman and then became the mayor. No executive experience. The President of the United States was a community activist. And people beat him up because he was a community activist. Became a senator and is now the President of the United States. This thing is about ideas. And I'm the first candidate that put forward his ideas. Not beat up everybody, talk about individuals, how horrible things are, uh, how terrible things can be, uh, about my resume, about my family. But what are we going to do collectively to transform this city? That's why I'm asking you to vote for me, and I'm asking you to vote for yourself. God bless you. The first, first question I'm going to ask is kind of near and dear to me because I'm a George Sp public school teacher. And it says, you think Newark should regain control of the public school system? If so, what is your plan for getting local control back? How would you like to see the public schools governed after control is regained? Would you want charter schools to continue to operate as their own legal entities outside the locally controlled public school system? If not, why do you think the state should continue to control your public schools? I know that's a long question. So if you guys need me to <laughs> repeat it or break it down by parts, I will do that. First of all, let's start with you, Mr. Barack, and since we started with Shawar for the first time to introduce himself. Do you think Newark should regain control of the public school system? And if so, what is your plan for getting local control back? Thank you. I thought you was going to ask before. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely agree with local control. As a matter of fact, we've been fighting for local control for a myriad of years, uh, trying to get the state to return the schools back to the city of Newark. I think the primary thing is that we need a mayor of this city that also agrees with that. That also agrees that we need local control and is using the, the mayor's seat as a bully pulpit, but also organizing the, the residents of this community to be a part of a movement to begin to, to begin to regain control of our schools. So we all, we need a three-pronged strategy, right? So we need a strategy that involves activism and organizing in this community. We need a continued legal strategy that involves continually taking these folks to court. And right now the court is siding with the governor. So what we have to do is go even further and, and, and further until we can get a court that's sympathetic with the things that are happening in our city, with the fact that they're taking away our voting rights. That's another strategy. The, 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 the last strategy is about how we govern ourselves as a school system. So we have to be, we have to govern around excellence. We have to make sure that our school system, that the schools itself are performing, uh, that we're putting resources into the schools, that we're making sure that our students turn out uh, uh, to be positive individuals in, in our society, that they're going to college, that they're graduating. These are the things that we have to do. So we have to show one, uh, that we are moving forward, that we are successful. Two, we have to be about an administrative strategy which says, look, we, we need our school system back and involve the activists and the community in that, and then we need a legal strategy that also pushes the courts to make them return the schools back to Newark. Uh, I agree that when we get the schools back, that it should be run by the people, that it should be elected, not appointed. The mayor shouldn't appoint anybody. I think Newark has a long history of us fighting for local We're on the path toward Detroit. Uh, if that's the kind of leadership we're going to have. In terms of the local control issue, I'm very proud as the school board president uh, to, have, to have brought uh, the North Public School to the highest score it's ever received since they take over uh, on the state benchmark for the return of local control. That happened under my leadership, and I'm very proud about that because we have a record, so that's why I like to talk about the record. Uh, because it's easy to talk about things and to agitate and to critique, but if at the end of the day we're not getting things done for the people, then it becomes hollow. So we got the highest score of all time. And we should have gotten local control then. When we did, when we did get it, we then got some lawyers together and we brought and we took the state to court. And that lawsuit resulted in the financial piece uh, with respect to control coming back to the district. It's still not real local control until we get governance, so we have to continue to do the work in order to do that. Uh, and that means that we're going to have school board members who know what the law is, who knows what the CUSAC requirements require. But at the end of the day, you have to know who we are. You know, what is our record? What do you have to show for the advocacy and the leadership that you provide? And if it's not much, then that gives you a sense of what's likely to happen uh, when it's time to decide who's going to run City Hall. Thank you. How would you like to see local, if it's returned, how would you like to see it going? Well, I think the people need to make that decision. I think we need to have, I mean, as I understand it, once uh, local control is returned, 
there's a vote of the people. Where the people decide that they want a mayor appointed school board, do they want an elected school board? Uh, and what's much more important for me is what does our educational practices look like? I'm a strong believer in extended learning time for our kids. Uh, it doesn't make sense for our kids to get out of school at 3 o'clock. That's a model based upon an agrarian model that doesn't exist in the 21st century. Our kids need more time on task when you have a graduation rate that's barely above uh, 50%. I believe in more support, more resources for our educators. I believe giving our educators the tools they need uh, to be successful. Uh, I hear about educators have to go into their pocket uh, for resources. That makes no sense uh, when we have a billion dollar budget in the North Public Schools, uh, which is what uh, we have. Uh, I believe in social services and wraparound supports for our children. Our children are dealing with things that many of us as adults uh, don't have the resource to deal with. So we've got to make sure we give our kids the counseling services and the other social services supports they need. This is 2013. We can't keep using the same mechanism we used in 40 or 50 years ago. Our kids have to be competitive in an international, global economy. So we've got to leverage technology resources uh, for our young people. So I absolutely support some of the 21st century learning uh, programs you see in the district. I'm also a strong believer in parent choice, and I apologize for that. Because the reality is in the 35, 40 years, uh, it's only been low-income families stuck in failing neighborhood public schools. Your, your politicians never put their kids in those schools. They'll get up in public and talk about parents should have these choices, and, and you got to send your kids to the neighborhood public school. But then at nighttime, they call up and say, can you hook my baby up with the public charter school? Or their kid may not take the test and they get into science somehow. Or they, or they live on Bergen Street, but their kid goes to East Side. That's what's happened for 30, 40 years. And we're going to keep it real. We can pretend that's what happens. So you have low-income families stuck generation after generation in schools where 10% of the babies can read on grade level, 15% of the babies can read on grade level. They take care of their babies. You didn't pay for them to have a taxpayer-funded car. You didn't pay for them to have their family members on the payroll. You didn't pay for them to have two and three public jobs. You're stuck holding the bag. They raised your taxes 40%. In 2010, to pass the budget, not only did they raise your taxes 16%, not only did they lay off 170 cops, they did a sale leaseback proposal where they sold Symphony Hall, they sold uh, police headquarters, they sold firehouses, they sold police precincts to get $40 million back, and you're going to pay 125 for the 40. Okay, this is the budgetary mismanagement we have in this city.
And more important than that, is something we have a record of, achieve, of achievement with respect to. No. So first, right now, you know, the tax abatement loss, it states all the things that the professor says. All those things exist. That uh, people who get tax abatements must hire new workers. People who get tax abatements must uh, procure the strategies, must be involved in Newark. People who get tax abatements, oh, there's a long list of things that exist for people who must get, ta get a tax abatement. In fact, before you get an abatement, there's a checklist that you have to check in order to get the abatement. The problem is enforcement, which is why I'm running for mayor, which is why he's running for mayor. The council does not enforce the tax abatement laws. The mayor does. The laws exist but they're not being enforced. If you want to counsel now, if you're paying attention and you just didn't start